trying to say about the Midwest being all boring? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes it was really about like leaving a place if you don't, you know, prove. I mean, I'm a big believer in leaving if, you're, if the place where you're at isn't doing it for you instead of like staying, staying and suffering. But it, it was loosely based on when I lived in Minneapolis. But but I wanted to keep it vague, and a lot of people were like, "Is that Madison? Is that Chicago? Is that St. Louis? Is that Long Island?" So it's like, it kind of worked, yeah. You know? But no, it's not like any diss on on the Midwest place like, specifically, but it's more like get off your ass and do something. You know what I mean? So like, don't just sit on it. You know, on a grander scale. Like this. How long did it take you to make the film? It took me three years to make it, and then I I did festivals for a year before I realized that I could actually release it myself. And so it's played it's played 23 major cities theatrically, which I did all with my mom. Um, she booked the film. We started like our first show was in Austin, Texas, right after South by Southwest, and we got 10 days, and we did really well. So we started being able to get other bookings like in the you know Madison. Wisconsin and Minneapolis, Iowa City, Cleveland, Ohio, and um, you know, like places where it was easier for me to go and just like get people excited to, to get there. And then we started building up to like more competitive cities where it's harder to get a film show, in, like San Francisco and um, Los Angeles and New York. Like I just opened a film in Los Angeles last last month. That was like the big, last really big film show that I've done. So it's been kind of cool just to be able to go. You know, like. Because my film was in Sundance, and I knew a lot of like the in, like indie industry people, and basically none of them have any, had anything to do with my distribution. And, like I deal with you know like the theater owners and the local press and the audiences and the people who help you put up flyers. That's it. So that's been really liberating. It's like oh, I don't have to wait for everybody's permission. Yeah. What did it cost to, to produce it? It cost fifty thousand dollars. Fifty job. What? What's your day job? Um, I, I write for different magazines and websites, which actually I got after I was at Sundance. Um, we're like, oh, you must know about film, because I've been doing like underground columns forever, and like, we'll pay you. So when I was on festivals, I, I used to see films at festivals and then get paid to write about them and stuff. And then it's it's gonna, you know, it's, it's, it's that's been pretty cool. So now that the tour is over, though, I'm gonna have to get like. I don't know what kind of new job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, getting the rights for all the music was that a hassle? Yeah. Or was, it, was it expensive? It wasn't expensive, but it was a hassle. Like, you know, there there was some really cool music that I wanted. That like, there was a Spear song that would have been so perfect, but you know, they just were like, they wouldn't budge, and it it was really hard. But what happened is like, either me or someone who worked on the film knew a lot of bands, and and once we went through the bands, like. It was still hard, it was a lot of paperwork, but it's totally worth it just because it's like, I was like, this is such a teenage movie, it really deserves like a cool soundtrack. You know, it would be different if it was like a Western. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, all the teen movies had a soundtrack, so I don't know if we'll be releasing anything on an album anytime soon, because that's like a whole nightmare. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe we can get a big enough video for this. Yeah. Oh, um, I, I wanted a Devo song. I called up and I talked to Bob, and he was like, he's a friend of mine. A friend of mine did a film on Combustible Edison, who was produced by Mark Mothersbaugh. And so I called up and I talked to Bob. I'm like, yeah, I want to use a Devo song. And he's like, well, which one? And I'm like, well, the Muzak cover of um, Come Back Johnny. And he just laughed his ass off. He thought it was like the greatest thing. He's like. Oh my God! So him and Mark were trying to set it up. Actually, Mark was like, "Well, I want to see, I want to see the film." So me and my mom like jumped into the car and like drove down to LA and like showed it to him. We're like, "Oh, we love it." My mom's like, "Who's this Devo guy?" <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so they were sending all this stuff to EMI, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't even, like, you know, they're like, "Oh, you have to pay fifteen hundred dollars just to play at festivals and then this much of blah blah blah." And we're like, "Well, we don't have it," you know. So fuck. And um. And Mark was like, well, here I wrote something for this other movie that they never used, and it'll fit perfect. So that was the music in the smiley face. And stuff. It kind of bums me out a little bit, though, just because 
if it was like that Devo song, there's a really good chance that Ryan would actually be listening to that music in his real life because, you know, that's the kind of guy he is. And, and um, I tried to make it so every single piece of music in the film was like motivated. Like they'd actually really, that would actually be the music or like the, the sound in the background. Like the only time when it's really scored is when, when Mary Jane's masturbating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it available on video? Not yet. So it's gonna be. It will be. Yeah. Right now, I mean, because because I've taken it around on my own for so long. Um, there's someone who's representing it, who's trying to get a deal. Because I really want to try to make another movie. And it's like if I do the video myself. I mean, it could. I've done it in the past, but it'll take like another year. And um, I think I think it's got enough of a reputation now that that it could be. So I, I actually have a mailing list. So if people want to sign up, I'll do like a big announcement like when it's available and for what, as well as like other projects that I'm doing. Like I'm working on this thing for the independent film channel and um, this segment on Ladies and Gentlemen of Fabulous Stain. You know, just like different stuff that comes up. So, um, yeah. so yeah, sign up, sign up here and you'll definitely Yeah. When I was 16, they showed Stranger Than Paradise on Nightlight, uh -huh. and then um, the next uh -huh. week they showed Smithereens by Susan Seidelman, and I was like, oh, chicks do it too, this is too I'm totally going to do this. So yeah, and it, because it's everything, it's like music, sound, editing, acting, visual, you know, photography, like, it's just everything combined into one, but, and then, you know, I was always like, oh my god, like, I'm going to make films, and so ever since I was 19, I've been making films, and I just really, really wanted it. Yeah? What's casting like for, like, small people? Well, this was most, mostly people that I knew, but the lead girl, um, I put up signs, like, at record shops and coffee houses, because I didn't want, like, actors, because it wasn't a slick movie. Like, I knew that off the bat, I wasn't going to fool anyone. Oh, yeah, man, like... Ooh, you know, I mean, so this, but this girl walks in and she's like Miss Actress and she had gone to the fame school and all this other shit. And, you know, and she was in this movie, My Lips and Turn Around, and she read for the part and she was so good. And I was like, wow, she really gets the character, like, it's really good. So I said, well, you can, you can have the role to gain 10 pounds because you're too skinny. <laughs> and so she thought about it for two weeks and then she said yes, and that's Lisa. Because I was kind of like, you know, I'm an independent filmmaker, I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> and I want to see more realistic girls, like I'm kind of sick of the way to think. I should also just say that I have copies of my first film. I was a teenage serial killer and I have t-shirts. This, this is 15 and these are 10. I take checks, and my print got really trashed, so, you know, if you want to pull that would be really great, but, um, yeah, so, I love them. You know, these make really good Mother's Day gifts. <laughs> uh, any idea what your next project uh, is going to be? Yeah, yeah, if you stay on my mailing list, I'll send you an announcement when you start the <laughs> so, All right.